Hello guys, after a long time, right? I mean, after a long time for a coding video or for your usual background. So remember one of my last video, we discussed how we can develop microservices to uh, become scalable friendly. Or as otherwise, we discuss all the time microservices should be scalable and independently deployable. But till that video, we didn't discuss how we can really do that. Most of the time, software engineers think, oh, scaling, that's none of my business. It is handled by the ops team or a Kubernetes will take care of it, that, or something like that. But that is not the case on the real production. I mean, you can do a tutorial or a normal your hobby project like that. But when you go to real enterprise system, you cannot do that because Kubernetes really can't handle your scaling. Kubernetes can handle the scaling, but it creates so many troubles to you. So as a software engineer, it is your responsibility to support Kubernetes so then you can have a kind of a win-win situation. Kubernetes will scale and it will not do any trouble to you. So in that video, we explained what is the problem. So since the Kubernetes is not aware what are the processes running on the services, when it goes to the scale down, sometimes it may kill some services which is you are already running some processes, right? So what happened? If they kill the processes, something save into the database or calling some backend services or something like that, then suddenly your process will disappear from the logs, right? And you can find some half-baked half results. And when you really dig into the logs, you can see suddenly pod is missing, pod is disappeared. So how to solve this problem? We discussed that today. We are going to practically demonstrate that. So what we are going to do is we are going to listen to OS signaling system, right? When, when, you, when the OS want to uh, like close some process, kill some process, and it, it we use various signaling system like uh, SIG term, SIG kill, SIG init, SIG, uh, so many, so many signaling. We can discuss that in a different video because there are so, so many signaling uh, processes handling by operating system and other process which is running. So today we are going to uh, tell our service to handle the SIG term and initiate the graceful shutdown so then we can peacefully close our services and everything and then we can uh, let the service to down. So now how this works, so Kubernetes will send a signal to our service to uh, run the scale down and then our uh, service will react to that and it will flag saying okay don't send me any more traffic because I'm about to die and then it will wait until all the processes complete and then finally uh, it will die its own so then Kubernetes don't need to send the SIG kill. So there is one part I'm not covering here because to make this video simple, if you are put using some, some sort of a service mesh, like if you need the uh, like layer 7 uh, load balancing, some, some kind of HTTP level load balancing, you may use something like a linkerd or some sort of service mesh or a service proxy with your pod, right? In that case, you can gracefully shut down and you can send a signal to your proxy saying, okay, I'm ready to die, right? So you can kill me now, kind of a thing. So then let's jump into the video. I'm going to demo this video using Nest.js, but there is no different. You can use the same technique, same thing with any other language as well, including Spring Boot. Okay, let's create a project. And this is a brand new project, so you can follow along. Right, we create the project. So let's go into the directory and open the project on VS Code. Right, so we have the project. Let's create the uh, new module, util module. And after util module, we need uh, control and service because uh, here, since this is supported by the Kubernetes, we need to make sure Kubernetes have some sort of a way to get the health information to make sure service is up and running. So for that, I'm creating control and service. Let's create control as well. I'm skipping the test because I don't need test for this video. So now you can see I have created my service and controllers. So now after that, I need a new service uh, to handle the shutdown sequence. So I'm going to create a service as a shutdown. So let's do inside the util. Right. So now I have the shutdown service and this will handle all our shutdown process and I'm going to delete the test because I don't need test. And meantime, I need other service. So this service will handle all the global variables because you remember we need a global variable to detect whether service in shutdown in progress for the service or not. 
so now let's export that variable so this is a very simple we have a simple variable saying uh, service is ready for traffic or not because whenever sig term comes we will set this to false until that it will be true so whenever this is true kubernetes will send the traffic to this one so let's go to the shutdown sequence uh, service so actually i don't need the injectable because i'm not going to i'm not planning to use this as a dependence injection so let's implement this create a new uh, async method to initiate so i'm getting an app and the service as uh, uh, parameters now you can see here there are so many signaling we can use like for example sig init and sig alarm sig kill sig term there are so many things we can use so many signaling but in this video we are interesting about the sig term this is not necessary to do but i'm going to use a t variable here so then i can get the uh, process start time and then i'm going to create a logger so we can uh, put the log statements and now as soon as i receive the sig term i'm going to log that so we are going we receive the sig term and we are going to initiate the shut, shutdown sequence i just change the class name to shutdown sequence because that's more meaningful so now uh, we are going to set that global variable to false remember we create the global variable so this is uh, indicate the kubernetes don't send any more traffic to me so now since i got the uh, sig term i'm going to create the new timestamp like if there is uh, if t1 is 0 i'm going to create a uh, current time to that and then i'm going to get the number of connection what i have in my uh, http server and i'm going to just log that so we know how many connections we had before we uh, shut down and then i'm going to close the uh, app server so this will be a graceful shutdown and if it is uh, successfully closed i'm going to log that and if it is any error i'm going to log that too so this style may be questionable using the await and the then but i'll explain that in a while at this point my web server is completely shut down so now i'm going to get the t2 timestamp and i'm going to log how long it took me to shut down my app server so remember we discussed that may you may have a linkered proxy if you do have something like that so you can call the shutdown hook of your uh, service mesh it's kind of initiating self-destruct process and here you can see i use the await and the then both because i don't use the app close response anywhere down the line i just uh, log that that's why i'm using the then so then i can limit that scope to the uh, whatever variable i'm going to use there so now i'm going to call that so here i'm going to get the response of uh, app listen to variable and as a server type variable so i'm going to get that and because i need that to initiate the shutdown sequence so now i'm going to create an object from new shut uh, my shutdown sequencer and i'm going to pass my app and the server object to there so since we are using this way that's why we remove the injectable uh, decorator there because we are not going to use that in a dependent injection manner so i'm going to lock the my process id here because to kill the process i need to know the process id this is completely optional when you real doing the job because when it comes to the pod, uh, process ID is always one. Okay, so now we almost done. We just need to run and see uh, how this goes. So let's clear it and run the service. Okay, it's run, but it's weird. It's run and it shut down immediately. Probably we did something wrong on our shutdown sequence. So let's go back and see. Mm, yeah, uh, so you can see here, I just uh, write, wrote my entire code below my uh, like sig term block. So I need to take this entire block and in, put it inside the process on sig term block. So this is why it's instantly shutting down. Okay, let's. Uh, so now it should be all good so let's run this again so yeah you can see now it stopped there so it doesn't run anymore so now let's kill the process and see what happened okay so let's get the process id and we can use a sig 9 is a sig uh, sorry kill 9 is a uh, sig kill uh, kill 15 minus 15 is a sig term and you can see here is immediately uh, hit our service and sh shut down initiated because there are no processes running behind the scene so that's why it's immediately turned down the service and but if we use the web browser we can hold this process for a moment because usually web browser sending a, a like keep alive and trying to keep the service up and running i'm mean, keep the session up and running 
so we may be able to reproduce that so let's try that so the service is running so let's run from the uh, browser and if we're going to like kind of uh, send the seek term yeah now you can see there is a one available connection so that connection will holding up and now if we kill the browser you can see it immediately uh, stop the process i mean this may not clear much but you can see there what well, just after i kill the browser uh, shutdown process completed till that it was waiting there but we should be able to demonstrate this more like um, clear way so let's put the uh, like kind of a sleep method here in the app controller so we can hold the like request process for some time and let's uh, put this for like 15 seconds so then we can send the request and during that time we can kill so then we can demonstrate it's working so let's make to the async and it should not be in the string so let's put uh, sleep for like 15 seconds so now it should be good um, let's let's make it 30 seconds because 15 seconds might not be enough for us to like go back and forth yeah put 30 seconds and let's run this right all good we got the process id and let's go back and send a request from postman and now we can kill it giving the process id right so you can see there is one available connection there right so now um let's see yeah it worked right so after the timeout period expired it's uh, like uh, shut down the service so now i mean uh, yeah this is but this is not very realistic so let's do this demo to see how this work uh, when you go with the, like kind of a multiple um, requests right for, for example like three requests holding up so now again our service is running so i'm going to send three different requests to the service and see uh, whether service is waiting until all requests are complete right so now uh, let's say we have one two three requests so now we got the process id and so this is equal like you can assume that the kubernetes is trying to scale down that so that means kubernetes is sending a seek term for this one so now we are sending one by one request the request one and the request two the request three everything goes well uh, so we should say three connections are remaining right so now kubernetes send the seek term so now yeah we can see our service saying uh, three connections are waiting now if we are right so now after all after last response delivered service should go to the shutdown so now in this moment already the shutdown request is came to the service but it's waiting until all response are dispatched so you can see the response are dispatched and now you can see service went to shutdown so now this mean everything worked perfectly well as we planned so let's uh, implement our uh, health endpoints like it's nothing but just uh, like responding our global variable so in a kubernetes configuration we have uh, some uh, configuration to use health endpoints like keep uh, liveness probe and the readiness probe the readiness probe mean the service is ready to get the traffic the liveness probe mean uh, to kubernetes to detect whether the service is uh, up and running so we can configure either tcp endpoint or http endpoint to the liveness prop or the readiness prop usually liveness prop we keep as a tcp endpoint but the readiness prop we sometimes keep as a http endpoint so we are implementing this health endpoint here so that uh, we can configure this to our uh, readiness prop so this is nothing but just responding our global variable right so if the global variable is true that sending the global variable otherwise we are sending a shutdown in progress because then uh, Kubernetes will see this as an error. So now if you go here, if you call the health endpoint, so you should be able to see the health response. Yeah, everything work working perfectly well as we planned. So is that all? No, not at all. So because, so now here's, here's the situation, right? So what we have demonstrated is we can go for a graceful shutdown, but 
what if this process take one hour to complete or two hour to complete or 30 minutes to complete then still at some point Kubernetes is going to send the sig kill so here though we initiate the graceful shutdown we need to set some configuration like graceful uh, termination period to the maximum time you need for example let's say you need five minutes to close your process let's say maximum your process take five minutes then you can set graceful time period to six minutes so that means when the sig term issued it will wait until six minutes to send the sig kill right we discussed this in, in the last video in very detail so you can go back and watch that video so you will get an understand so now what we need to do is we need to terminate as we explained in the previous video we need to terminate all this uh, requests before we hit to the this threshold level right so uh, next video i'm going to show you how you can use interceptors and inject the desired timeout for every single http request so the request will be terminate before we hit the sig okay so that will be in the next video then stay safe take care